This talk is about mutations responsible for protease inhibitor resistance. These are my disclosures. There are three main protease inhibitors in current use, lopinavir co-formulated with the pharmacokinetic booster ritonavir, adazanavir, which can be administered boosted with either ritonavir or cobicistat, and which is also approved for use without boosting, and darunavir, which can be boosted with either ritonavir or cobicistat. Each of the protease inhibitors mimics the natural gag pol polypeptide substrates that are cleaved by the protease enzyme. The figure on the right shows the 3D structure of the HIV-1 protease bound to a PI in yellow, which resides in the enzyme substrate cleft. The protease is a homodimeric enzyme comprising two symmetrical 99 amino acid polypeptides. Most of the protease inhibitor or PI drug resistance mutations reside in the substrate cleft where they interact with the PIs including some which are in the flap of the enzyme which is situated above the substrate cleft. Several additional drug resistance mutations are situated further away and reduce PI susceptibility either by impacting neighboring residues or by compensating for the reduced fitness associated with substrate cleft mutations. The STAMFOR database contains sequences from about 4,400 persons who received lopinavir as their only PI, about 1,000 persons who received adazanavir as their only PI, and 160 persons who received darunavir as their only PI. There are far few published sequences available from persons who received darunavir as their only PI, largely because darunavir has often been used following virological failure of other PIs. Moreover, the development of PI-associated drug resistance mutations is exceedingly rare in patients receiving darunavir. The figure at the upper right shows the drug resistance mutations selected in patients who received boosted lopinavir. M46I, I54V, and B82A are the most commonly selected lopinavir resistance mutations. These drug resistance mutations do not cause any cross resistance to darunavir. Other drug resistance mutations which are associated with darunavir cross resistance include V32I, I47A and V, I50V, L76V, and I84V. And the most common accessory drug resistance mutations, L10F and L33F, and the uncommon substrate cleft drug resistance mutation, I50V. This figure shows the drug resistance mutation selected in patients receiving adazanavir with or without protease inhibitor pharmacokinetic boosting. Adazanavir selects for two signature drug resistance mutations that are not selected for by other PIs, I50L and N88S. Of note, I50L is associated with increased susceptibility to each of the other PIs including lopinavir and darunavir. There is some overlap with the drug resistance mutation selected by adazanavir and lopinavir in that V32I, M46I, I54V, V82A, I84V, and L90M have been selected by both PIs. As you can see from the figure headers, only 20% to 25% of those persons with virological failure on lopinavir or adazanavir containing regimen develop PI-associated drug resistance mutations. This is a well-recognized phenomena that speaks to the high genetic barrier to resistance to these PIs, which will be discussed in more detail. There is a significant amount of in vitro susceptibility data available for most protease inhibitors, including lopinavir, adazanavir, and darunavir. This figure shows the results of a regression analysis for lopinavir 
in which each drug resistance mutation is an explanatory variable and the fold reduction in susceptibility is the outcome variable. The height of the bars are proportional to the mutation's impact on susceptibility. The most meaningful mutations are listed at the upper right. Resistance to protease inhibitors can be complicated because multiple mutations are usually required for protease inhibitors to no longer be effective. This figure shows a similar regression analysis for atazanavir. Atazanavir differs from lopinavir and darunavir because it has a lower genetic barrier to resistance and because there are two mutations, I50L and N88S, which are uniquely associated with atazanavir use and which alone significantly reduce atazanavir susceptibility. This figure shows the regression analysis for darunavir. High levels of darunavir resistance can occur in viruses from people who have had virological failure on a previous protease inhibitor and then develop virological failure on a salvage regimen containing darunavir. Two or three of the mutations shown here, in combination with two or three very specific accessory mutations, are usually found in such patients. This slide and the next two slides go into more detail about the mutations associated with reduced susceptibility to lopinavir, atazanavir, and darunavir. The figure shows the median fold reduction in lopinavir susceptibility determined by the monogram phenosense assay associated with those patterns of drug resistance mutations present in at least three viruses that underwent susceptibility testing and that were associated with an at least fourfold reduction in lopinavir susceptibility. Mutation patterns associated with lower reductions and susceptibility are not shown because of space limitations. The median fold reduction for a pattern is shown by the circles while the interquartile range is shown by the surrounding triangles. The figure shows that PI resistant isolates often have multiple PI resistance mutations. What do we know about the clinical significance of lopinavir associated drug resistance mutations? An analysis of the earliest studies in which lopinavir was used to treat patients who had developed virological failure after receiving other PIs reported that mutations at nine positions shown at the upper right were found to be the most predictive of a reduced virological response to lopinavir. This analysis only looked at whether there was a mutation at a position and not the specific amino acid at that position. The data was also skewed by the fact that most patients in these studies had previously received older protease inhibitors, such as nelfinavir, sequinavir, emprenavir, and dindinavir. Therefore, the results might be slightly different if the analysis were done today following more contemporary regimens. An analysis of data from the same trial suggested that isolates with a fold reduction of greater than ninefold had a reduced virological response to a lopinavir containing regimen, and that those with a fold reduction greater than 55 fold had no virological response to a lopinavir containing regimen. This figure shows the median and interquartile range of the fold reduction in atazanavir susceptibility associated with patterns of PI resistance mutations that occurred in at least three isolates undergoing atazanavir susceptibility testing. Only those patterns associated with the median fold reduction of greater than twofold to atazanavir are shown because of space limitations. In contrast to lopinavir and darunavir, there has been no clinical trial that has provided sufficient data to develop a predictive genotypic score for atazanavir or boosted atazanavir. There have been several small retrospective cohort studies, but the drug resistance mutations predictive of reduced virological response were different in different studies. 
The absence of a predictive genotypic score is also in part due to the fact that atazanavir is primarily used for first-line therapy and has generally not been used following the virological failure of other protease inhibitors. Boosted atazanavir has a lower genetic barrier to resistance than either boosted lopinavir or boosted darunavir. An analysis based on one clinical trial in which boosted atazanavir was used in PI experienced patients found that there was a marked drop-off in virologic suppression for isolates with a greater than five-fold reduction in atazanavir susceptibility. The figure shows that this level of reduction can be reached with certain individual drug resistance mutations, such as N88S and I50L, and with certain combinations of two or three drug resistance mutations. The figure shows the fold reduction in susceptibility to darunavir associated with those patterns of drug resistance mutations present in at least two viruses. The median and interquartile range are shown. A robust genotypic resistance score was developed in 2008 based on data from the darunavir registration power trials. The score predicted the fold reduction in darunavir susceptibility and the likelihood of responding to a darunavir-containing salvage therapy regimen. The highest levels of darunavir resistance occurred in isolates containing about five drug resistance mutations, two or three of the major drug resistance mutations shown here, plus two or three of the accessory drug resistance mutations also shown here. The drug resistance mutations in bold were in the original darunavir genotypic score, but for completeness we have added it two additional mutations that were subsequently also found to be associated with reduced darunavir susceptibility. An analysis by a monogram of the data from the power trials found that a tenfold reduction in susceptibility was required for the virological response to darunavir salvage therapy to become reduced and that a 90-fold reduction was requ required to completely abrogate the effects of darunavir salvage therapy. This slide shows the patterns of PI drug resistance mutations in 55 patients from South Africa who developed virological failure on a second-line lopinavir-containing regimen and who were found to have at least one PI-associated drug resistance mutation. The three columns show the total mutation penalty score associated with each of the patterns as determined by the HIV-DB Genotypic Resistance Interpretation Program for lopinavir, atazanavir, and darunavir. Nineteen patients had a total mutation penalty score of 20 or 25, which we translate into low-level darunavir resistance, and three had a score of 30 associated with intermediate darunavir resistance. None were predicted to have high-level darunavir resistance. This suggests that darunavir will usually be active in patients with virological failure on a lopinavir-containing regimen, although in many patients the genetic barrier to, to darunavir resistance will be decreased. Although patients with virological failure on atazanavir are less likely than those with virological failure on lopinavir to have darunavir cross-resistance, there has been no published comparably-sized cohort of patients who received atazanavir for second-line therapy. The protease inhibitors have a high genetic barrier to resistance, and most patients with virological failure on a boosted protease inhibitor do not initially develop PI resistance drug resistance mutations. The figure on the right is from a systematic review of acquired PI resistance in Sub-Saharan Africa in patients receiving boosted lopinavir. It shows the prevalence of PI resistance drug resistance mutations among those undergoing genotypic resistance testing. 
the prevalence did not reach 20% about, until about 20 months into a second-line regimen. Few data are available for boosted atazanavir in the same scenario. And as noted earlier, the risk of emergent PI resistance in PI-naive persons receiving boosted darunavir is exceedingly low. It has been hypothesized that the emergence of PI drug resistance mutations may only occur in a narrow window of suboptimal drug concentrations that both exert selective pressure and allow virus replication. One of the explanations for the high genetic barrier to PI resistance is that in addition to the frequent requirement for multiple mutations in protease, drug resistance often also requires additional mutations in GAG, usually at the sites that are recognized and cleaved by the protease enzyme. The precise number of such mutations and their exact locations are not known with certainty. The data that I reviewed in this presentation are summarized to a large extent in the notes section of the HIV Genotypic Resistance Test Interpretation Program and in a very brief format in a PDF handout. The HIVDB website also contains a list of all mutation penalty scores. There are individual scores for nearly all drug resistance mutations and several penalties that go into effect only when certain drug resistance mutation combinations are present. The total mutation penalty score for a drug is based on adding all of the individual and combination penalty scores. An in-depth description of the HIVDB resistance interpretation program is described in another presentation. All drug resistance mutations that receive a mutation penalty score and some that don't are accompanied by a comment. The complete list of comments for each drug class can be viewed on the website. There is also a table that lists all pre-computed scores for all combinations of drug resistance mutations present in the database. The table can be sorted by the number of sequences so that the most common drug resistance mutation patterns are shown at the top or by those drug resistance mutations associated with the highest scores for a protease inhibitor. It is useful for us to check this table to make sure that the updates to the mutation penalty scores lead to the results intended for actual virus isolates. This figure shows the top of the table sorted by the number of sequences in which the most common drug resistance patterns are shown, ranging in number from about 2,400 to 560, and a section lower down in the table showing those patterns occurring in approximately 55 sequences. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions or suggestions, please don't hesitate to email us.